So it says planet reach, but that close to a gas giant, I feel like we should probably be a moon. I'm sure there's a very significant semantic debate in universe about just that. <laughs> to the joy of pedants everywhere. Bob de Kaffa Ice Shelf, a pause. So July 26th, it's been about two days. Oh shit. Coordinates received. Initiate immediate course correction. The Office of Naval Intelligence Sword Base is presently under siege from a Corvette class Covenant vessel. Due to the sensitive nature of this facility, use of orbital rounds has been for the moment prohibited. Regretfully, At least it's just a Corvette. To obtain relevant yeah. data on enemy forces have been unsuccessful. However, current defensive forces are insufficient. Oni has requested Team Noble's direct intervention to help secure Sword Base. All right, people. We're stuck with that ship for the time being. Let's focus on the hostile infantry. Give those troopers a hand. Cat they look six, like they could here. use it. George yeah. Bill, you're next. Get prepped. Let's move, Lieutenant. So, it said in the location card, we're at the ice shelf, so we're a little... we're in a polar region. And... Cat, yeah, six. some glaciers. Push back the attack on sword base. Find out what we're dealing with. Roger that. We're cool. You'll see some uh, ice flows and snow. It's all very pretty. Spartans, hostiles yeah. north. Oh, that's Colonel Holland. We heard about him. Mm -hmm. We also, in that cutscene, heard from uh, Auntie Dot, which is the AI that is helping direct UNSC forces on Reach. Um, yeah. She comes up a couple of times throughout the whole story. She oh look a, a phantom by the way. Oh yeah. Uh, Halo three style. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We we hear from Dot. I, you say a couple times, but fairly often, honestly. She's not like voice in our ear like Cortana is, but she introduces a couple missions. Um, I like the UI for her. Yes. The the map grids being diamonds. Yep. It's pretty inventive. Oh, look, a sniper rifle. Ah, cat's down there putting putting the work in. Much like um, ODST, with Reach, they sort of diverged and did their own thing with the music. Um, there's less like orchestral choirs and there's more like hey let's throw in a guitar or let's throw in some horns right yeah reach also has a very m noticeable and well used central theme that gets morphed throughout the game and a lot of the music always kind of comes back to it uh you know obviously you have the halo theme that each oops Head for the main gate to the east. I'll brief you as you go. Sword control. I see a God target locator. Any artillery support in the area? Limited, but we'll prioritize support. whatever you need, ma'am. Well, let's pick this up. Here, I'll, I'll drop this sniper rifle yeah. for you, Skull. Hold on, it has four shots left. Neat. This is a special weapon. You only get it right here. Sat link established. I wonder what it does. Oh, well, they did mention artillery support. Maybe it's some kind of uh, designation tool. Crew Echo Five Seven, headed back to base. But we've got enemy tangles on our six. How copy? Look out! Oh, mm. wraiths in the area. Oh, goodbye. That's why you don't charge a wraith. Yeah. Oh, am I gonna miss? Cause that one didn't want to drive forward. It's beautiful. Oh, delightful. So it has a little recharge period. Mm -hmm. Well, the artillery needs to reload after all. Yeah. We could probably try and board that other rate if we wanted to. I... <laughs> There's also a rocket launcher up here. I'll come grab that. I uh, ran out of sniper bullets very quickly. So, same... Wraith stuff, as always. I think this might actually blow up. No? Cool. No, 
bought it. Uh, we can Beautiful. drive wraiths again. Ah, pelicans are back. Yep. Pelican inbound transport station. I've got the gun. Uh, you keep that wraith. I'll uh, I'll take the marines. All right. Well, cat hopped in the gun, so. Mm -hmm. The Warthog model, again, they've added a few more details, but it's pretty much just the Warthog. Command. Airview base has an anti-air battery that will help clear the skies. A, a gun is to the west, comes array to the east. Let's roll. Um, an interesting feature you'll notice is the, uh, the AI Marine is actually moving his gun to point where I'm looking. Mm-hmm. That's handier than you would think. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> AI are a little better at using vehicle guns this time around. Um, but you heard there, we have actually two different Go objectives. Uh, this so... is kind of the game's silent cartographer level, as it were. Yeah. You know, it's a big open circle. Hey look, glacial drift. Yeah. Uh, but what I was saying about the music. Um, you know, yes. obviously every Halo game has its own take on the theme with, like, that game's chosen instrument but beyond that it's like other than special moments you don't have a dedicated through line of music mm. and you're left with like a weird handful of tracks that don't really have a an identity um <laughs> reach does yeah so look, uh, we can see off in the distance a big landing strip. Like, this is a big military airport. Yeah. Uh, well, it's And, an, oh, it's look, a, the Corvette... Ability. The Corvette is right atop it. Like, it recognized it as a strategic asset and is sieging it on purpose. And there's an <laughs> air battle going on. I love those distant air battles, by the way. You but see it's... a lot of them in this game. Yeah. It, again, they, they try to sell that it's not just you, that the whole fucking planet is, you know, fighting. Yeah. Um, they will mention it eventually in the story, but uh, the reason why Reach is so important, and the reason why everyone is in disbelief that the Covenant can be attacking it, is that Reach is essentially a giant shipyard for the UNSC. Mm -hmm. um, they do a lot of constructing big spacefaring vessels with big guns. <laughs> yes. Oh, and the Covenant attacking it is Enemy bad. So we have a spirit and a phantom in the same area. Oh, we gotta turn on that anti-air gun. Hold on. I'll go do it. You cover me. Alright. Oh, it's up on the roof. I gotta use the, uh, the little external staircase here. Alright, here we go. Air defense is online. <laughs> and that phantom is out of here. Yeah, this anti air gun actually looks like it could do the job. <laughs> right? Nice work, Spartans. Head to Farragut Station and get that comms array up and running. Spartans, this is sword control. Thought you could use some mobile firepower. So they'll they'll drop off oh, yeah. another warthog for off, us. Please. But I want unless you took it already, Skell, there's a, a weapon that the elite up there has. No, I did not take it. I kept my rocket launcher. Alright, and it's a uh, well it's a new kind of weapon. It's called the plasma launcher. It's, That's an interesting name. It's a new Covenant super weapon or power weapon. Mm hmm. I mean, it's uh, pretty super. I ain't gonna lie to you. Luckily, uh, I can show off its capabilities without fully using it. But mm -hmm. if I hold down the button, does that? It charges up up to four things. Now, it's called a plasma launcher, so let's surmise from that name that it launches plasma grenades, <laughs> and they home. It's a lot of fun. You get a, a very light, mild lock-on to a target, and they will slightly course-correct. There we go. 
Yes, yes. Uh, you mentioned the the assets. So going back yes. to this, um, what long time watchers of the series might actually recognize some of these because the this is what was used for Halo One Anniversary. <laughs> uh. Uh, unfortunately, the wraith controls kind of like garbage in this game. It's it's a little too low to the ground, I think. It gets caught on a lot of things. That it... Well, what doesn't help is not necessarily that it's low to the ground, but more that the terrain is very rough on Reach. They weren't afraid to um, break it up, you know? Yeah. And also, uh, vehicles like to explode and scatter debris, which can be a bit of an issue. <laughs> yeah, they changed how the vehicle health system works in Reach. Um, not for the better. Vehicles are a little more fragile overall, unfortunately. In previous games, they worked largely, and I'm sure there's, like, different different uh, nuance to it, but they worked largely by being tied to your personal shields. So if you, you know, survived and got your shields back up, the... The vehicle would be more or less safe until you took a lot of damage again. In Reach, mm -hmm. they just have a pool of health points, like they did in, in 1, actually. Yeah. And we come to another little thing. What the hell is that? It's a new vehicle. It's the best vehicle. It is the best vehicle. Yeah. So, uh, we talked about the Wraith in Halo 2 and how it, it had a nuts fire rate. Uh, that down there is the Revenant. Um, it was Bungie's way of giving us the Wraith from Halo 3 and the Wraith from Halo 2 in the same game. <laughs> yeah. The Wraith is... I hope it hasn't been blown up. Um, or the, the, the... We'll get we'll get a couple chances to find one throughout the, the game. I'm actually going to try to snag it. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do similar. I'm trying to snipe the pilot. He's just being uncooperative. Perfect. Come on. Yes! Uh, an off, a feature I don't know if we actually talked about in the series yet, but the, uh... Oh boy. Um, okay, so yes, the, the plasma rifle is still in the game. The plasma repeater is just like a heavy version of it. Yeah. So, there's that. Um... Oh, the Revenant. I love the Revenant so much. Yeah, I'll it's... let you uh, go for a, cr a spin. I'm it looks go cool. We, we don't ever get the... Um... Uh, what was it called? The the thing that was oh. replaced by the, the mauler. Or not the mauler. The, um... the... Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I... We, were, we made such a big deal about it. Shadow? No, not the Shadow. No, the Shadow is um... the big troop transport. Uh, well, you know that one. Spectre, it's on. Wasn't it? Yeah, the no. Spectre. Yeah, I think it was the Spectre. <laughs> Which was replaced yeah, we... by the, the brute, skimmer, mm. thing. It was like the Prowler, wasn't it? The Prowler, yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't get that back, but we do get this, which is a very... It moves It's as, it moves as fast and it's as maneuverable as a ghost. It has a boost that lasts a good okay. long while. And, and it, it has fires so fucking fast. And it hits about as hard as a, um... Uh... Wraith. Yeah, not quite as much, but mm, it's good. It is good. It is a good vehicle. It might be like the best vehicle. It's also tanky as fuck. <laughs> now the, so the only real point... downside to it is it doesn't have a whole lot of angle on its gun. It can't look very far up or very far down. So stuff directly in front of it tends to be fairly safe. Unless you just boost and ram the shit out of them. So yeah, at some point the Covenant figured out that uh, high mobility and, uh, you know, firepower is a good combination. And then they completely forgot about that for the entire rest of the war. Yeah, and um, that brings us to an interesting problem Reach has. The question yeah. of, where did X go? <laughs> Such as... 
Where did the Revenant go? Where did the Plasma Repeater go? Where did the Plasma Launcher go? Where did this Elite Armor go? Where did the Skirmishers go? And there that's a bet are... you make when you uh, create a prequel late into a series, yes. right? Yes. Um, we, we lightly touched on it when we were complaining about the Brutes in the timeline in ODST. It's gonna but, get worse. Uh, yeah, Reach is where it gets way worse, because it's like, they introduce new weapons and equipment that just never show up again, with no dialogue anywhere to sort of justify it. Look, I've but gotten you know a what? needle rifle. Speaking of oh, new weapons. Yeah. Um, Cat has yeah. stolen the Revenant, so we might not ever see it again. Um, the needle <laughs> rifle is essentially the carbine, except it fires needles, like the needler, which means that, yes, you get the super combine. Uh, three needles into an unarmored, so no energy shield target, does a super combine. Oh, surely it has a slow fire rate to make up for that. Oh god, no. Nope. It's also fully automatic. It's... it's... It's really good. It's... It's really, really, really good. It might be the best weapon in all of Reach. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna Noble get my strike. target this is back. Get back to sword base ASAP. On our way, Commander. Six, let's go. Ah, oh, hey. Look at what it is. Where'd the Gauss hog go? Well I mean we <laughs> see it in Halo <laughs> 2, but not Halo 1. So you want the uh, revenant or you want the Gauss hog? Uh, and I have a, a target choice. designator and a plasma yeah. launcher. Mmm. Cat almost ran me over. <laughs> you know what, Skell? Let's do it. I'll use this for the time being. Time for a lot I'm of gonna, firepower. I'm gonna s here, Parkus. Yeah. Let me just. Noble, be advised. Company corvette <laughs> moving into position. Cat six. Get your you love to see inside. it. Mm, real good. So the Gauss Hog looks a bit different. Uh, they made a, a they made it look a bit more like something that uses magnets to project slugs rather than just a recoilless rifle. Yeah. Still hits like an absolute champ. Be careful there. Yeah. I'm uh, going... I actually do get a little red indicator for it, so... Yeah. I'm actually gonna hop out and grab a new weapon, because I intentionally used up this. Awesome. Because I'd like to keep the plasma launcher for what happens next. <laughs> uh... Alright, let's roll. So, you see Sorry, we've made Marine, a big loop, have to walk. and we've, we've come back to where we started, but it's not... A reuse of the level. No, uh, it's. I mean, we're gonna backtrack a little, but it's it's interesting yeah. what they do here. Cat, where are you? Opening the gate now. I also like the design of these uh, security doors. These good. bulkheads. Yeah, they make sense. Very severe uh, angle. Hey, Skell, why does yeah. that make sense? Well, uh, something that we learned, especially when it comes to uh, tank armor, but armor in general, is that uh, the more you angle something, the more it has something called effective thickness. Because when a bullet hits an angled piece of metal that is, uh, you know, when it's striking it, it has to pass through more material in order to penetrate that metal because of the, you know, the angle. Uh, but in addition to that, angled metal is very good at deflecting fast-moving projectiles. Uh, they tend to ricochet off it. So, putting your big metal bulkhead doors at an angle pretty much doubles their thickness if they're at a 45-degree angle. Fascinating. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, now, uh, unrelated to that, you'll also notice that, like ODST, there is no dual wielding. That's no. fine. Spartan 3s cannot dual wield, sadly. I say it's fine, but it also makes the, um... doubling up of automatic plasma weapons a little awkward. 
Because, mm. like, why would I use the plasma rifle when the plasma repeater <laughs> exists unless I can't find one? And the answer is... Uh... Uh. Now, see, this elite <laughs> is dual wielding. Yeah. So, certain elites can still do that. Don't have a target, Captain. Oh boy, Cat, you didn't just pick a fight, did you? She probably I don't think did. I can win that fight. She's very good at picking fights. So yeah, we come back to this, uh... Well, I'm, I'm dealing with a dual-wielding white elite right now. Oh, I'll, I'll come and assist. So we've come back to this landing zone outside of the base. You know, it's like a staging area, parking area, offloading area. Got him. Ah, oh, you got him. But we are expected to actually enter the base proper now, which was locked yes. down before. Uh, now, we're intended to hoof it in and uh, do quite a difficult fight. Ah, uh, I but, see uh, you did the thing while I wasn't looking. Yeah, you see, uh, the Warthog oh, is in all the vehicle. Oh, yep. hunters. Well, let's see what this does. Very well, useful. Not a lot to the hunters, sadly. You know what else is useful? <laughs> oh, it deflects! I forgot you could yeah. do that. Hang on, I need to reposition. I don't have a good angle. I'm out of ammo, right. Uh, there's a shotgun here. It's helpful-ish. Alright, good. I've got a good angle. Hold him right there. Oh! Duck it for cover. Hold on. Ah. Well, I took care of it. Uh, shotgun looks a little different in this game. Yeah. Does about the same stuff. <laughs> nice. I do love this game. <laughs> so yeah, the hunters are um a bit different. Yeah, they're uh, um they get bulkier every game. Um yeah. they are back to just the regular uh fuel rod gun, however. They don't have the plasma f beam anymore. And it looks a lot more like the one from Halo 2. Yeah, now of course we can see there's a lot more detail in the weird gross Wormy shit. Bit. Yeah. So Hunters are only going to get bigger the more you play a Halo game, and don't worry, they're <laughs> even huger in Halo 4. Oh boy. I'm actually super interested to see what they look like in Halo 4, considering, you know, I know it looks very different. Yeah. Anyway. Lots of things oh, look hey, different look. in Halo 4. Look, it's the ONI logo. Yeah. Just in case you forgot where you are. <laughs> well, fine, right? <laughs> I'm calling back to the, the bricks in ODST. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, security breach. Check it out. That was the hunters. Yeah. Well, that's the hunter sector. But look, at the back of sword base, there's another breach. We should probably go deal with that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so the, the plasma launcher may be not used to the best of effect against those hunters, but it is quite a good weapon. It's very good at dealing with vehicles. Like, very yeah. supremely good at dealing with it's vehicles. It's mainly what it's for. Uh, we're gonna now go up this elevator, and, mm -hmm. um, don't pay attention to what you see. <laughs> they still haven't fixed it. They that. haven't fixed it. <laughs> As of recording, <laughs> um, <laughs> October 2020. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Oh, cat! No, wait, hold on. <laughs> I doubt that. It's a tactical maneuver. She had to learn after she lost her arm. Also, mm, cat lost her arm. Do you want to talk about the burden of extended media again? So I, funnily enough, I know there's some stuff about that. I don't actually, like, I haven't read Did, any of it myself. Well, you don't have to read it. Did you know that the opening events of this game are actually canon to the fucking TV commercial? 
Oh, that's right. I forgot you, about that. Yeah. They mentioned that we as Noble Six are here to replace the previous one, who presumably died. Well, if you want to know what happened to the previous Noble Six, watch the fucking TV spot for Halo Reach. <laughs> I, f I completely forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me. I mean, it's a fine commercial. It's live action. It has, like, cool costumes and effects and stuff, but... Yeah. My god. They don't- they don't even play it. They don't recreate it in this no. game. No. You, uh, you it, just- you is like, It doesn't even play if you wait on, like, the pause menu for the original release or something. No, and, right? like, it like, doesn't- it doesn't matter. The- the events no. previous- directly previous to this don't really matter, but, like, that's where you see the Spartans fighting, uh, the- the insurrectionists, I think. Yep. And it's- it, yeah. It's fucking <laughs> stupid. Anyway, so, hey. <laughs> we can switch Stop. our armor loadouts now. Yep, so now you got the armor lock. Uh, it protects you from grenades, but, uh, hang on. Oh, well. well, you should probably... Oh, well, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd run out of it, you see. Okay, so now we get to, now we get to talk about the uh, problem with the armor loadouts in the campaign. Uh, that, that armor lock is now gone. Yes. It doesn't drop on death. No. Uh, which is uh, so. fine in single player when yeah. you dying resets the checkpoint, but not in, in co-op. Co yeah. Uh, so, hey, remember talking about how places need to feel like places? Yeah. Hey, you want to see something cool? This high security ONI base? Yeah. This has got a big old body scanner before you enter the facility proper. And it called oh, us hey. Lieutenant, because that's our rank. It recognized us. Also, we're a Lieutenant, and we're on the bottom of the totem pole in the Noble team. Yeah. That's kind of wild. <laughs> See, um, um, that's that's something that uh, we sort of touched on. Bungie seemed to think that rank equals ability, right? Yeah. If, if you're good at fighting, you have a high rank. That's not how it works. If you have a high rank, it means you do less fighting. Again, <laughs> the Master Chief should be bound to a desk doing paperwork all day. Uh, you see, in real life in the military, if you're good at fighting, the lower your rank. Actually, hey, do you want a cool sniper rifle? Oh, you can't take one. Do you want a cool sniper rifle? No. Okay, so we get an interesting feature here. Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. look! They're in our squad! Yes! Sergeant so, S. Redock and Private J. Minor. So, uh, I actually nicked one of yours. I've got Private F. Sodolin. Nice. Um, yeah, but yeah, uh, funnily enough, Bunchy do acknowledge that rank allows you and affords you command. Yeah. So, uh, we actually get, uh, Marines that'll follow us around and fight with us. And what makes them different from the AI Marines in all the other games is that these guys will stick to you like glue. Mm -hmm. As long as they don't die, they will pretty much follow you for the rest of the level. <laughs> and what's, what's further interesting about them is it gives us their names. Mm. Which means that as small as it is, we have an emotional connection to them. We know their names. Mm. That makes us, on a subconscious level, want to care about them. Also, I don't think this is a particularly important distinction, but I will point it out. So the UNSC, right? We've seen plenty of Marines in the game. Mm -hmm. These guys aren't Marines. These guys are Army. They're not part of the Navy Division. That's... Their uniforms are different. That's true, yeah. So, um, yeah, they're wearing the Army uniform. Yeah. Uh, which is barely different from the Navy uniform, but it is different. Well, what's interesting uh, also is that it is more similar to what we saw in Halo 1. Mm. versus what we'd see later in Halo 2 and 3, because it's back yep. to the brown armor. Yeah. Which is why they just straight up used these models for Halo 1 Anniversary. But as far as... as far as putting the emotional connection to them with their names, uh, you're gonna look down at the corner of your screen there and notice that they're gone at one point, and you're gonna be like, oops... 
<laughs> so a detail I also want to point out for uh, any of you uh, who are thinking about joining the military. Um, you don't need to wear your three-day pack if you're inside a base defending it. <laughs> you, you don't need to do that. That's... <laughs> Soldier, the magazine. <laughs> you expecting to sleep over? You expecting to roll out your thing, sing some campfire stories, and tell ghost tales around a, a campfire? Huh, are ya? I mean, maybe these guys were returning from a patrol or something, but yeah, you, you don't need to wear your three-day pack inside maybe. a building. <laughs> They're all wearing it, by it's the way. June. Here he is. Hey. What the hell are you supposed to do with that inside a navy facility, soldier? <laughs> no. Also, blowing up sensitive computer equipment, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, we're a Spartan 3 unit, we're afforded a certain amount of collateral damage allowance. <laughs> yeah, I think that's something you get really here more than in any other game, which isn't something I've ever brought up, but I... I... We'll make fun of the Master Chief all day and say I don't know who the hell he is, but... Corbett's gonna rip this base apart. What's the situation, Noble? Can't do this on my own! Need another Spartan up here! <laughs> Six, get to the top floor and assist the meal. But something I like about the idea of a Spartan is, is that it's this super soldier who is within reason allowed to do anything they want, and they only get in trouble if they die. Yeah. Right? Like, their job, especially, you know, in the Covenant War, is to save Earth and save humanity. Inflict um, as many casualties and as many losses on the Covenant as they can. Um, yeah, whatever that entails. Yep. Uh... Do we want to also talk about how this area is a multiplayer map, since that kind of feeds into the, the Halo 1 series we did? I was actually going to mention the same exact thing. We will see a lot of areas in this game that are also multiplayer levels. Um, yeah. There, there were a couple other ones in previous games that were, but in Halo Reach, and it's, it's multiplayer, ex pretty much exclusively has maps that are in the campaign. Uh, uh, which is a smart use of your resources, because it lets you create more, right? Yeah. Like, you can... Yeah. Um, it also creates combat arenas in the campaign that are interesting. It really does. If not necessarily the best balanced. <laughs> Ooh. Commander, this base yeah, I, 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 I saw that. I was going to say something. But... Oh. Speaking of, uh, seeing that... Is he still around? Yeah, he's still here. I'll see if I can get one of them there. Nope. Okay. Well... Looks like he did find something. Yeah. So... Hey, look, the base is getting pounded. We might oh. wanna... Well... I might wanna do something about this. So the lock-on is back from Halo 2. It works a little differently this time. You have to wait and charge it up, essentially. But uh, it's a good change, in my opinion. Yeah. I've missed the lock-on. Hey! Oh. I'm dying a lot this game. Yeah, don't worry. We'll, we will die plenty, don't worry. <laughs> uh, fuel rod gun is back. It's still... Still reloads. I kind of wish that for the Halo 1 connection they'd made it uh, battery powered, like in the original multiplayer, but I guess considering that wasn't a bungee decision, shrug. Yeah. Uh, looks like you're going to be doing all the work. I don't think there are any rocket launchers left. Oh, here's one. Well, I'm, I'm not doing all the work. Check it out. Noble team, long the meals up there. Inbound, yeah, yeah. To push. Yes. Orbital defense is standing oh. by to take the shot. Oh, never mind. Here we go. But yeah, that's, uh, only sword base. Yeah. So for those of you not in the know, uh, doesn't really matter, but what they're doing, they're painting a target with a yep. laser designator for this to happen.
pretty good. Beautiful. It's almost ending. like those uh, so much big, big guns are useful. Nice work, by the way. I aim to please. Five, six, get down to the science wing. Dr. Halsey wants a debrief and command saying we're now all Now there's earned. a name. Repeat. Sounded like you said Halsey. I did. Copy that on our way. Well, there's obviously <laughs> some amount of tell me. import been on her applied to it, life. but we don't know who she is yet. Requested your assistance, Commander, and hey, she do not sounds need a little to familiar. report on events that occur on my own doorstep. What I do require is a detailed account of your previous engagement. George, it's been too long. It's Mom. pretty cute that they what have her have standing in blue light. <laughs> Just some so this is made. she's Indeed. voiced by the same person who voices Cortana. Its data center was home to one of my Xeno archaeologists, Professor Laszlo Sorvad. Perhaps you could shed some light on his death. If he was a civilian male in his mid-sixties, he died with a Covenant energy sword through his abdomen. Elites, then. They engaged us as well. It was just, uh, just after we found your scientist's daughter, Mom. She was hiding in the... Irrelevant. Uh... The elites. Tell me more about them. Three. Zealot class. One got bias. The leader, from the looks of him. Zealot. You're certain? Their armor configuration matched. Shield strength, too. I gave the order not to pursue. Our primary objective was to get the station's relay back online. Your primary objective? Commander, are you a puppet or a Spartan? Ma'am? There are those at Oni, myself included, who believe the Covenant dispatch elite advanced teams to hunt down artifacts of value to their religion. Survivor accounts suggests such teams are small, nimble, and almost always zealot class. No doubt, they came to the station for the abundance of Oni excavation data stored there. And you let them get away. Data retrieval was not a command directive. Even had we known, we had other more urgent matters to attend to. Like warning the planet. Professor Sorvad's final entry in his field notes made reference to a latchkey discovery. Latchkey. Not a word he would use lightly. So let's hope that the data module your lieutenant commander stole contains it. Cat? Before you ask, I was alerted the moment you attempted to access its contents, as I am with any unauthorized tap. That data is classified Tier 1. I could send you to the brig for interfering with my work. Maybe you'd like to join her. I'm sorry? We're currently under emergency planetary directive. Winter contingency? I'm sure you're familiar with the punishment for civilian interference with the Spartan deployment. Are you threatening me, Commander? <laughs> just making a reading suggestion, ma'am. Again, he just wants to get the job Let's move, done. Noble team. Doesn't care about anything else. Mom? That will be all, George. <laughs> 